my angels, it's Haley Reese, and I hope that you guys are having a fantastic morning, afternoon, night, whatever it is for you. But whatever it is, I hope that you guys are super excited to talk about one of the most haunted places in the world that's actually a sanatorium. And I've wanted to talk about this specific location for the longest time because I've wanted to go and visit this specific location for the longest time. So today, we are going to be diving into Waverly Hills Sanatorium and it is going to get extremely spooky. Before I get into today's video though, I would just very quickly like to thank today's video sponsor, Swagbucks. If you guys have been here for a while, you guys know that I absolutely love Swagbucks and Swagbucks is a place where you not only are able to save money, but you're also able to make money. With Swagbucks, you save on brands you already buy from through cashback, discounts, and more. And you also earn additional spending cash by taking surveys, watching videos, and playing games. It's literally that simple. With Swagbucks, you can receive cash, but also gift cards for places like Sephora, Walmart, Amazon, and way more. So if you guys wanna sign up for Swagbucks, all you have to do is click the link in my description, and by clicking this link and signing up, you will get $5 just for signing up. So thank you so much to Swagbucks for sponsoring today's video, and without further ado, let's get into the spooky content. So like I said, today we're gonna to be talking about Waverly Hills Sanatorium, which is extremely haunted. During the 1800s and 1900s on the earlier side, during the 1800s and the earlier 1900s, America was suffering from an outbreak of what is called tuberculosis, which is otherwise known as white death. Now tuberculosis is now curable, but back then it absolutely was not. And back then it was highly contagious and no cure existed at that particular point in time. It would claim thousands of people's lives, even wiping out entire families. In Louisville, Kentucky, the death rate reached such a high number that people began to become desperate to find a cure. On July 26th, 1910, Waverly Hills Sanatorium opened up to hopefully treat and ultimately cure this disease. However, they would become bombarded with patients needing treatment and eventually would exceed the capacity limit of this specific space. So due to the overflow of patients on October 17, 1926, Waverly Hills Sanatorium upgraded and a bigger, better building opened up that was able to treat more patients at once. The location was secluded and quiet primarily to keep this sickness away from others as at this time they were unaware that it was actually an airborne disease so putting people into secluded areas seemed like the most practical and safe thing to do at that time. But it was also in this location in order to bring sunlight and fresh air to the patients as at this point in time that really seemed to be the angle of treatment was treating it via sunlight fresh air and rest. So this was the perfect location for that to happen. Now they really became like their own world, growing all of their own foods, having their own livestock, and nobody within this facility had any access to the outside world. Even the doctors and nurses who weren't infected with the disease were unable to leave the premises. Now, unfortunately, many of the treatments which would occur would be deemed by some today as unpractical and even torturous. One of their leading angles in finding a cure, like I mentioned earlier, had a lot to do with sunlight and fresh air, alongside with rest. Now, none of these particular things are bad at all. In fact, sunlight, fresh air, and rest seem like a really great approach. However, the method and how they applied it sometimes put the patients in a really uncomfortable treatment. For some treatments, patients would be left on rooftops or in front of completely wide open windows for hours at a time, even in the coldest of weather. No matter the weather, they were there receiving that treatment. Other treatments included removing the ribs in order to allow the lungs to expand, which to me sounds so painful, but I also understand the fact that medicine was nowhere near where it is now, and they were really trying to do the best that they could in order to find a cure for this specific disease. They would sometimes even remove muscle tissue and lung tissue and all of these things in order to find ways for the lungs to expand, and in some cases, they would even insert a balloon into the lung, pump air into it in order to allow the lung to expand. Many patients would die during treatment or of the disease itself, so many, in fact, they would have a body chute, a tunnel that leads down the hill where all of the dead bodies would be taken. Now, the reason for this specific chute was primarily 
to keep the dead bodies away from those that were fighting for their lives and kind of keep them out of sight. Now that area in itself is said to be extremely haunted as well, which rightfully so. So many bodies are being transported from the top of this hill where they just endured a terrible sickness and needed to be taken down this hill through this secret tunnel. Eventually a vaccine would be created to treat the disease and cases of the disease slowly began to decline. The hospital would actually close in the year 1961. The building was then cleaned out and renovated and in 1962 the building reopened as Woodhaven Medical Services which was a geriatric facility meaning it was a facility for the elderly. Now Woodhaven Medical would actually be closed by the state in 1981 due to speculation of patient abuse, which just kind of adds to the dark history of this particular building. Now, many things were said about the treatment of these particular patients, but not all of which were confirmed. A few horrible things as far as treatment went were confirmed, but others were not. So the degree of the abuse is still kind of a mystery and remains unknown, but it is known that they were shut down due to reports of patient abuse. Today, the building is completely abandoned. However, it is open for specific tours and overnight stays and things like that. So what are the hauntings surrounding this specific building and what are the ghosts that are more commonly seen? First and foremost, there's said to be an entity called the Creeper which resides in this residency or in this building. The Creeper is supposed to be this entity that's dark negative and absolutely terrifying. It's said to crawl along the floors and the walls of Waverly Hills. Some people think it's actually a demonic entity while others think it's just a tortured soul from the disease that they either died from or the abuse that they had endured. Many guests claim to see shadow people all throughout this specific building which is something that I would deem as too far-fetched. Shadow people are almost everywhere, I've done an entire video on them and a space like this with such a sad history in general definitely seems as though it would have that type of activity in it. Many people hear children's laughter, other people hear people crying. There's so much activity that is seen and heard within this place, but there are also very particular spirits that are seen. Now the fifth floor is said to be one of the most haunted. Room 502 is said to be super haunted and actually has a really dark history surrounding it. In 1928, the head nurse in 1928, the head nurse of room 502 was found hanging from a light fixture. This was believed to be a suicide, which many believe was triggered by a depression caused by an unwanted pregnancy, and that may have been what caused it. But even more dark, sad, and terrifying is that not four years later, another nurse who worked in room 502 jumped off of the roof patio to her death. Now there's no records explaining why she did this, and there's no theories surrounding it. Other than that some people believe since there was no reason for her to have done it, perhaps she may have actually just been pushed which leads people to wonder who would have pushed her and why. Overall, the reasoning as far as how she wound up from the top to the bottom is unknown, but sad and tragic nonetheless. Another commonly seen spirit is that of a homeless man and his dog. It's said that the two of them fell down the elevator shaft when the building was abandoned and both the spirit of this homeless man and the dog are commonly seen. There are also reports of a spirit of a little boy named Timmy who was said to have died there around the age of six-ish and it's believed that since he died at such a young age he was unable to really comprehend that of his death and has remained there ever since. Now it's said that he is super playful and actually really enjoys playing with both rubber or leather balls. So many believe if you want to communicate with the spirit of Timmy, you should bring a toy ball and he will play with the ball and communicate with you. There's also the spirit of a little girl that's commonly seen running around. There are also some really sad and traumatizing spirits like those with bleeding wrists and, and things like that, which is so sad and just breaks my heart to think about. Now, one thing that super freaked me out but also really fascinated me admittedly is that it said tour guides at Waverly Hills have claimed to see doppelgangers of themselves and of others. And in a lot of these cases, the doppelgangers were nearly identical. However, they had black holes where their eyes should be. Which could you imagine seeing a doppelganger of yourself 
with black holes where your eyes should be. It just gives me so many chills, but it also fascinates me and makes me wonder why that would be happening there. I think overall, this is a space of a lot of heartbreak, a lot of sadness, a lot of sickness, and just a lot of emotions in general. And so it does not surprise me in the least that Waverly Hills Sanatorium would be haunted. But I wanted to come on here and share all of the things with you guys and just share all that is Waverly Hills Sanatorium with you guys because I find this specific space really intriguing but also at the exact same time and on the exact same token super heartbreaking as much as I really want to go there and visit it and see what I sense and see what I feel I am also very saddened by the things that occurred there and the loss of life prior to the vaccination being discovered and it would be a place of extreme heartbreak so that is it for today's video. I really hope that you guys enjoyed it. Let me know any of your theories down below. I would love to hear them. You guys know that my absolute favorite part of every single video that I ever film is talking with you guys, so make sure you guys do that. Thanks again to Swagbucks for sponsoring today's video, and that is it. If you guys are new to my channel or you are just not yet subscribed but you do enjoy my videos, make sure you go ahead and click that subscribe button. I upload a ton of videos, so I don't want you to miss when I upload. And please give this video a big thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Remember my loves, do all things with kindness. And until next time, I love you guys. Ooh.